Hi, I'm Vijay Singh. I'm Assistant Professor and Extension Weed Specialist at Virginia Tech. Aerial drones are revolutionizing agriculture sector and have been used for mapping and classification of insect pests and many other crop issues. Recently, spray applications with aerial drones have received a lot of attention even though it's not new to agriculture. First use of aerial spray technology was observed in 1990s in Japan and then it was experimented in other countries later on. According to few reports, millions of acreages are being sprayed in China with aerial drones and up to 30% of the total pesticides in South Korea are applied with these technologies. These systems can be used for site-specific management and blanket applications. The use of aerial drones is being investigated in several countries, but still in early stage of development. It has been found that the unmanned aerial system or the aerial drone spray technologies can lead to greater efficacy of contact pesticides due to better distribution of spray droplets compared to tractor or the conventional technologies. Now the US or the aerial drone assisted pesticide applications can be useful for site specific management of invasive species and treating weed escapes in production fields that survived the early season control measures, which may include herbicide resistant weeds as well. These technologies are very useful when soil is wet or the weeds or the crop canopy is large or maybe when the tractor is not an option. Custom applicators nowadays are spraying pesticides at a rate of 30 to 40 acres per hour using these technologies and by replacing or swapping the batteries. In general, there are two broad categories of aerial spray drones in the market. One is the fixed wing drones and the another one is the rotary wing drones. Now in rotary wing drones, we have two different kinds of drones available. One with the rotary automizers and one which are equipped with the nozzle types. Rotary automizers regulate or we can select the droplet size based on the speed of those rotaries and we can decide our own droplets when we spray in the field. For the nozzle type drones, we have to select the different nozzles based on our requirement of the droplet size or label requirements. Now, in the nozzle type drone systems, we have further subdivisions where there are some drones which are equipped with the booms and few drones would have the fixed nozzle sockets. For spray operations, depending on the drones which you have, there could be one operation, two operations, or maybe multiple operations. Now, depending on if you are going for the site specific or the spot um, applications of the pesticide, or you would like to go for the blanket spray applications. Now, in general, for the blanket spray applications for the different drone types, we need to have two operations. One, to map the field first, and then using those grids or the mapping mapped field, or you can convert that into shape file, and that can be used for the spray drones to spray that specific area. Few drones like the DJI systems or the DJI T40, T50 system, they have uh, the camera installed in those and they come with the uh, pre cubed cameras which can map the field. And then in the second operation, you can use those to spray that particular field. You can use aerial spray technology or drones by fulfilling three federal regulations currently set for UAV operations throughout the US. One, that is part 107, which is required a permit for small unmanned aerial systems. The second, the part 137, which is required for agriculture aircraft operations. You may get this uh, uh, certificate with exemptions for the drones which we are using. And Title 49, Section 44807, Certificate of Waiver or Authorization, which is required or which may help you to safely and legally fly drones which are heavier than 55 pounds. 
Now, apart from that, you may have a specific state regulations or requirements which you need to fulfill. Along with that, we need to see the label of herbicides or the pesticide which you are applying, whether that would allow for the aerial applications or not. Along with the volume requirement and other specific guidelines. If you follow the label guidelines and with these three federal regulations which I currently explained, you would be good to go. However, it's always good to check with FA or your state pesticide regulatory authority to see the updates and if there are any changes in these regulations.